From an evolutionary perspective, it is within reason to expect a U-shaped relationship between exercise dose and mortality. But in reality, there is little solid evidence that extreme levels of exercise are either harmful or additionally healthy. A number of studies have found that elite athletes, especially those who do endurance sports, live longer and require less medical care than non-athletes. And this is true for non-athletes too. A study that followed nearly 22,000 ordinary people, non-athletes, for 15 years found that the highest dose exercisers did not have higher or lower rates of death than those who exercised moderately. An even larger analysis of more than 600,000 individuals found that extremists who exercised more than 10 times the standard recommended dose of 150 minutes per week did not have significantly higher rates of death than those who exercised between 5 and 10 times the standard dose. These findings reinforce the notion that light to moderate doses of exercise have a substantial positive impact on health, but that continued dose escalation appears neither incrementally better nor worse. One long-standing and very legitimate concern is the potential effect of too much exercise on the immune system, a concern that gained traction in the 1980s following studies which found that marathoners and ultramarathoners had higher rates of self-reported respiratory tract infections following their grueling races than fit individuals who exercised more moderately. These and other data led to the hypothesis that the energetic demands of extreme exercise create a temporary open window for infection. The open window hypothesis is common sense, but just how much exercise is too much needs further study. When researchers later repeated those early studies looking at the rate of respiratory tract infections among marathoners and ultramarathoners using medically based rather than self-reported diagnoses, they found no elevated incidence of infection following acute bouts of exercise. In addition, new sophisticated experiments have tracked how immune cells move throughout the body after prolonged bouts of exercise instead of measuring their abundance in just the bloodstream. According to these studies, long and hard workouts do lower bloodstream levels of key immune cells that fight infection, but also redeploy some of these cells to the mucus lined surfaces of the lungs and other vulnerable tissues, thus potentially providing heightened surveillance and protection. And there's even evidence that regular, moderate physical activity can help protect against some contagious diseases. But we need more clinical data on the extent to which high doses of exercise suppress the immune system's ability to ward off infections and under what conditions. That said, there is no question that anyone fighting a serious infection should avoid overexertion. Another big concern is heart damage. Every once in a while, someone dies tragically from a heart attack in a marathon or some other athletic event, prompting scary articles about the dangers of overexercising. You can also read that some extreme endurance athletes have abnormally enlarged hearts or show signs of damage such as calcified coronary arteries and too much fibrous tissue. These calcified plaques can cause a heart attack if they block an artery, and because plaques contain calcium, which shows up nicely in a CT scan, doctors routinely score plaques by their calcium content a coronary artery calcium, or CAC, score. Usually, CACs above 100 are considered cause for concern, and doctors have noted that because many competitive runners have CAC scores greater than 100, they assume these patients are at an elevated risk for heart disease. But these risk estimates are based on non-athletes and do not take into consideration the size and density of the plaques the size of the coronary arteries around them, or the likelihood that the plaques will grow, detach, or do anything else that could cause a heart attack. An alternative evolutionary perspective suggests that plaque calcification is one of the body's many normal defense mechanisms. And when researchers look more carefully, they find that the dense coronary calcifications commonly found in athletes tend to differ from the softer, less stable plaques that are indeed a risk factor for heart attacks. Instead, they appear to be protective adaptations, kind of like band-aids to repair the walls of arteries from high stresses caused by hard exercise. One massive analysis of almost 22,000 middle-aged and elderly men found that the most physically active individuals had the highest CAC scores 
put the lowest risk of heart disease. The fear of a high CAC score among the very fit is a characteristic example of how cautionary notes of high doses of exercise tend to be based on poorly understand risk factors rather than actual deaths associated with those risk factors. Another example is the so-called athlete's heart. Athletes tend to have enlarged, more muscular chambers of the heart that allow each contraction to pump more blood. One consequence is a low resting pulse, 40 to 60 beats per minute. Because these big, strong hearts at first glance resemble the dilated hearts of individuals suffering from congestive heart failure, worries persist that too much exercise causes pathological expansion of the heart. Big was thought to be bad. But the superficial similarities in heart size between athletes and those who suffer from heart failure have different causes and consequences. Apart from potential arrhythmias, especially atrial fibrillation, there is no evidence that a big strong heart poses any health risk. So can you exercise too much? Maybe at extreme levels, and most certainly if, if you are sick with a serious infection or injured and need to recover. You also increase your risk of musculoskeletal injury if you haven't adapted your bones, muscles and other tissues to handle the stresses of repeated high forces of, for example, Olympic level weightlifting, playing five sets of tennis a day, running marathons, or overdoing some other sport that obsesses you. In other respects, the negative effects of too much exercise appear to be ridiculously less than the negative effects of too little.